All right, I guess that means we're ready to go. Call to order the Tatamat Deserve Planning Board meeting for October 9th, 2024. I'll start off by saying welcome aboard. All right, so just kick things off first with some introductions. Um, William Hanley Chair, our Vice Chair, Tracy Loftus Keller is not here tonight, but we have um, regular um, board member Ann Dalton with us. We've got Gail Marshall, Alan Kimberly, and alternate Daniel Burke. And because Tracy isn't here tonight, I think the first thing we should do is make a motion to Dan be member today. Second that. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Daniel. <laughs> Into the breach. Yeah. Voting member. Yeah. And then uh, just for all of you out there joining us on Zoom, um, if you can, please just sign in to chat um, as uh, just so we have a yeah, record of who's attending. And then just please oh, add. Here. I'm sure we're all familiar with Zoom protocol by now, and it looks like everybody is. But if you are out there in Zoom world, just put your on, put yourself on mute. If you have um, something to say during public comment, uh, raise your hand and we'll get uh, right to you. And um, let's uh, let's get on with it. And Heidi, can you remind me of the minutes we have to prove? September 11th or September 25th. There you go. I move approval. Second. Of the 11th. Each one needs to be voted on. Yes. Sure. Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have the minutes of the 25th. I move approval. Okay. Second. I have a question. Is that the one in which you didn't have? Information that is the one it was uh lot size, size of the lot for Dodge Point, yeah. Dodge Point. Mm -hmm. So it just isn't in there. I, I listened to the recording mm -hmm. twice again. I can find anything that I could. Yeah. So we'd have to make a finding. I mean, we wouldn't just amend the minutes, but we'd make mm -hmm. a finding. The, I think it was those costs are I mean, part of the uh, the minutes now. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. What's that? Aren't the checklists considered yes. to be part of the minutes now? Um, sorry, I have to also watch this. <laughs> um, Hold off until next time. Thank you. Right. It's, it's your, I'm okay with that. Yeah, all right. Experience. Let's press the pause button on the uh, minutes from the 25th. Okay, so you're not those? No. Well, how do you want to correct that deficiency? I mean, Let's, I think the size so of the lot was discussed, I seem to recall that. There's six points something. I don't remember the top well, head. What is your concern about the deficiency? I, well, she's saying that we don't. It's, I'm just stating that that piece is blank on the 4.3.5. The size of the worksheet, lot. Size of the lot for the Dodge Point. Yes, you definitely did mention specific size of the lot for the tennis club. Um, that was in there, but I couldn't. There's like no I said, mention of the acreage. Uh, I, I went the through my notes. Off. I listened to the recording twice. It's just not, there's nothing specific to the size of the lot that I could pinpoint the four, that, that first criteria at 4.3.5. Well, they broke it out in two sections. In the shoreland zone, they had two point something acres, and then outside of that, they had four acres. Right. And so I was on the surface. And and it was it was just never mentioned, uh, never mentioned. I mean, it, I'm just thinking about procedurally. How how do you correct that? I mean, is that something that chair can go and look, Kim? Well, you can you can reference. I mean, 
We had the survey plan. Mm -hmm. Right. Just um, make an amendment to the amendment minutes and reference the yeah, that was my survey. suggestion. You can because it's all part of the packet. It's just they it's it all out the minutes now. Huh? Yeah. I would just reference the survey plan. Okay, so I will move to approve the minutes, and then we'll do an amendment after we get the motion on the floor. That be right? Yes. So no, I, I. You amend as amended. Yeah. With the reference of section four point three point five to the survey plan relative to lot size. Mm -hmm. Okay. So move. Second. Can, you, can we have that one more time? I'm sorry. Uh, we're referencing the survey plan. The survey sorry. plan, yep, that was submitted with the application relative to section 4.3.5. Um, to lot area. Uh, just states the lot area. Is that what you want? The okay. lot area. We got it. Yes. Survey plan relative to section 4.3.5 states the lot area. That's the size of the lot, I should have said. Size of the lot. I made the motion. I made the motion. Okay. Alan seconded it. Okay. All those in favor? I, uh, as amended, correct? As amended. Yes. Here you go. Thank you for noticing. Well, let's. Um, I think there was a question from you, uh, that applicant, about the agenda tonight. Before we get into it, it's possible for us to go. You have to start your. No, sorry. You have I, to start I, your public I hearing. I know that. I well, just, stick I, stick I know. Down. I know that. I'm just procedurally going through the motion. So there was a request from the um, applicant tonight for the. Um, Item five on the agenda, if we could shuffle the the um, agenda around, have them go first and um, the first go last. But uh, the complication that was brought, brought to my attention is that we, we published the specific time of the public hearing for the first um, item on the agenda tonight. And we've got members of the public here for that. So... You know, it, it, we'll uh, we'll roll through it as best as we can, but I, I think we've got to stick to the agenda because of that. So. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We just have to find someone coming in to it's a coordination team. Always, uh, All right. I know you guys can handle it. <laughs> we'll try. All right. So let's. Let's keep rolling here. So we've got item three on the agenda tonight. We have a subdivision application. It's section 4.5. We have a public hearing. It's 6.05 tonight. So, and this is um, a subdivision application 002-2024, owner Broadway Cabin LLC, agent uh, Marius Bellino. Uh, location is Aspen Way, Mount Desert. Tax map 12, lot 13-29-005, zoning district, Shoreland, residential five and rural woodland three, purpose to divide lot number five within the Solter subdivision amendment number four. And are there any conflicts of interest on this one? Not for me. Gail? No. And no. Daniel? No. Will William? I think I have one because I live in this development, so uh, I would ask the board to kindly accept my recusal on this first application. I move acceptance for recusal. Second. Against my best interest. <laughs> right. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. Then um, you guys, because... Just Tracy isn't here tonight, then you need to elect a chair uh, in my absence. I suggest uh, Gail to I'll take second. over. I'll second that. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Go get him, Gail. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate Tim allowing us to be my co. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. grab the hammer. Okay, no, I don't. Thor. Um, Serena. Okay. So we have. Bear with me here. Um, we do have a public hearing, and we are at the point where this application was deemed complete, but for, um, I believe we need a plat plan. Is that correct? Yeah, and what you found then. Um, then and we needed a map that ending, yeah. has been provided. Um, so with that in mind, the next step would be a public hearing. And we are in a position where we can simply open this up for public comment. And I would just ask anyone who wishes to comment to state their name. And if you have a particular relationship to this app this application, you're a body and property owner or, or what have you, if you would just state that at the outset, that would help us. Um, and with that, I will open this up for public hearing. And if anybody wants to comment online, we'll try to notice you and recognize you and make that happen too. So anyone in here or anyone online who just to address this application. Well, I, I would like to address it if I could. And you uh, are? My name is Bill Mulchin. I and my wife own uh, lot six that abuts um, lot five. And we were given notice of the hearing tonight. And um, what I'd like to find out is, um, it, 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 or is the, the ultimate purpose to sell one of the lots if it gets divided and if so which one would be sold and which one would be retained would it be proposed lot seven or proposed lot five is can anyone answer that well um okay. yeah yeah sure yeah and, and this is justin pajazic uh the owner of the lot with my wife through the the entity there we, we would intend to, to sell one of the lots, um, and but we haven't determined which which lot uh, would be sold. They're both um, very beautiful lots, but we haven't quite made a determination on that front. But you certainly believe you're going to sell one of them. That's the whole purpose of dividing this. Yeah, the 13 acres was just more land than we needed. So that we spent some time getting familiar with the property and kind of came to that conclusion over time. Thank you. Mr. Motion, do you have anything further you'd like to ask? Um, not at this time. If I mean, if if anything else, I want to say I I certainly will will okay. go ahead if anybody else wants to say anything. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else, either online or in the audience, would like to address this matter in this public comment time? I don't see anybody with their hands up. And we have everybody on the screen, right? Anyone here? If there is no other, I, I just I guess at this point I'll circle back to you, Mr. Motion, because it seems as though there may not be any other public comment. So if we get to that point, we'll close the public comment. So this would be another opportunity for you to uh, speak to us. Um, I, I don't have anything else. Okay, thank you. Anyone else it looks like somebody's it's speaking? Stephanie Carr <laughs> is trying to say something. I don't know if she's on mute. Right. Are you, Boucher, are you attempting to speak? If, yeah, you, you're, right. if you are, you're on mute. So you need to unmute. We can't hear you. Or type a comment in. So just trying to say. Mm -hmm. 
but we don't use chat. It's it's Boucher. Boucher, thank you. Maybe she was getting some help. Um, we're, we're still not hearing you. You are still muted. Can anybody tell them where the mute, the mute button is usually down at the bottom? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so I, I'm in Boucher. I own uh, one of the abutting lots. And I just want uh, to reiterate that we had some issues previously before the lots were sold and were uh, just hoping that this will all go smoothly and that there is no intention of making any changes uh, to road privileges or any such thing uh, which could lead to another situation like we, the one we had. I briefly met the new owners and they seem uh, very nice, so I don't anticipate that. But I just wanted to mention that as a comment because it caused a lot of strife within our otherwise very close group. Yes, I don't, I, from what I see of the application, I don't anticipate that it's going to impact the terms and conditions involving the use of the road at all. That's, yeah. that's, I, I personally don't see anything in that application that would affect that. And I, we understand there was an issue previously with a prior owner, and we understand that perhaps that got resolved with some documents that exchanged hands at the outset of this ownership. Yes. So... Thank you. Thank you. I, I just wanted to make that comment because I think it affected uh, many of us uh, quite badly. And uh, I don't I'm not anticipating that there would be any such issues. I just wanted to mention it because it was a very bad experience for many of us. So thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and yes, I guess done uh, unless you change your mind. Um, yes. Uh, Dorothy uh, Ivan, I'm uh, also a member of the Woods Road Association uh, to which the subdivision belongs. A question that might be best answered by Kim. Is there any means that we are aware of that the developer of the Stone Tear uh, subdivision could in future annex land to that subdivision and attempt to use that subdivision road? You're talking about the other side. Mm -hmm. If that ever were to happen, they'd have to come back to the planning board um, to have it looked at. I don't, I don't anticipate it being connected, but I don't know. But any amendment like that would, would have to come back for a revision. And it would have to go through its own process separate from this. It may not require a full blown review. It depends on the board. Mm -hmm. You require to have a full blown review, which if it doesn't create lots or if it's not going outside the scope of the subdivision um, and it's not creating units, then ideally it doesn't require public hearing, but it certainly is your fault. I'm glad you directed that. Anyone else? If not, then I'm going to close the public hearing and the board can then proceed to process this application. Now, we had I had some question about how we proceed in this regard. Um, we could, in theory, go through all the provisions of the subdivision division ordinance, making sure that all of the provisions have been met, 4.2 and so forth. But my understanding is that since we accepted this as complete at the prior meeting, that as long as we've satisfied ourselves that the public comment has not substantially impacted the board's deliberation, then what we need to do is... You have to listen to it now. Move, move approval of the application. 
Yeah, there's a form in front of you, Gail. It is. That, no, the one that, one that you said right there. Okay, no, right there. Yes. Where on this 4 7, you guys, you're ideally saying the application is complete and you receive the final flat plans, which okay. I assume she has them. So, yeah, if, um, so at this point, it's complete. Again, you close the public hearing, it's done. You, you, you vote on it and then you sign the plans and they have to report it. Then make a motion to approve that. <laughs> yes, go for it. Make a motion to approve the uh, plan is submitted. Complete. Second that motion. Discussion. Oh, also, can we backtrack a little yes. bit? Um, you need to verify that public notice and of others were notified to the police. Is that this so thing? Yeah, I think it should be. Okay. I read the newspaper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can read it because. Should I do that because okay. you're a chair? Sure. It's right here. Uh, the public was notified uh, on the Ellsworth American and the Mount Desert Islander on Thursday, September 19th, 2024 of the planning board meeting for this. And also in the Ellsworth American and Mount Desert Islander on Thursday, September 26, 2024 of this uh, said meeting. And then the butters are in there too. Yes. And the we butters the were notified. Butters. Yeah. As well, the abutters have been were notified. Do I have to read the abutters? No, you just have to put the date if they were mailed, and there's a list in the back. <laughs> Both the abutters in there. I can't hear you. Both of the abutters are here. Mulch and yeah. 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 He asked a very good question. Um, which one of the guys? Yes, I, I, yeah, he asked me if I knew. I said I didn't. Yeah. Uh, Perhaps we could, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so you I'm looking for the list of abutters. Here we go. Uh, the abutters were notified. There's a butter notification on August 26, 2024. And there's another one. For this hearing, mm -hmm. Let's see dates on your biceps. All right, come on back. Um, no, there you go. Second. <laughs> okay. So, bodies were notified in September 19th, 2024. And we've got to set up the uh, newspaper office. Okay. Are we ready to proceed having determined yes. that notifications were properly? The bodies have been notified. Okay. Any other comments or questions about the motion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So I will sign this letter to Maria. And we I believe have to sign the flat plan. And then this has to be reported. Do we have is there more than one? There's a signature block. Are we signing each of them? Every one of them. All right. As you guys are town to the form. So you can start. Objects. Then pass them around. Another pen for me to sign up. Just sign right under here. Mm, yeah. Yeah, you'll probably I'll, I'll sign it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can share. And somebody can date it. Sign every three pairs. Yeah. 
And the date is not. Yeah, I'm going to give you this. And not that we're going to get too many books. And then if you get one down there, I'll put that back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you can send that back. Mm -hmm. And maybe you. Yeah, so you're not sure. I don't know. I do Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That happens. Yeah. I take it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then there's the letter. Yeah, exactly. No, I just I'm going to use that pen. Thor and Thor. That okay. Yes. And here's him. Here's the document with the. And I think that concludes this matter. Yes, the hand. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good luck. So we will. Re Bring William back. If you'd like to make a motion to return the chair to the chair, that would be appreciated. I'd like to make a motion to uh, return uh, Bill Haley to the chair. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's Bill Hanley. Bill Haley was rocking around the clock. <laughs> I just want to say that. <laughs> he probably rocks around the clock. <laughs> All right. This train rolling down the tracks. So we have some good news through here. Yeah. All right. So let's keep going. So we have a conditional use approval application. It's application 10 2024. Owner name is Dean and Ruth Goodman. Family trust. The agent applicant is Ariana Ariana Goodman. Um, location is 14 Oak Hill Road, Mount Desert, and tax map 21, lot 9 001, zone village residential 2, and stream protection. Uh, the purpose of this is section 3.4 and 6C.5.2, excavation or filling of less than 50 cubic yards and other essential mm -hmm. services. We had a site inspection at 315 and was this one advertised and abutters notified? I believe so. Where do you find this stuff? I've never done this. So Where do you find this stuff? Good morning, too. Yeah, it should be. You got. We usually don't get a copy of it. Yeah. It's right there. All right. Yeah. No, that's the agenda. No, that's. There's your abutters. Okay. So we have an abutters list, and the abutters were notified. Um. 
September 23rd, 2024. And we had uh, notices placed. I don't think that's, that's it. not that's, it. That's just the agenda. Yeah. Where were the notices placed? Yeah, Alan, was it in the previous? Folders? No, I think so. Was it the folder? Where'd our, where'd our blue folder go? Is it in that folder? Specifically, that person should be. Oh, yeah, butters were notified in the Ellsworth American and uh, Mount Desert Islander on October. I mean, uh, September 26. 2024. All right. Let's keep that for the next one, too. Yes. Um, so we had a site visit at 315 today. And Ann, did you care to report on your observations from the site? So we observed uh, an old section of sewer pipe that ran, ran under what appeared to be a dried up riverbed, um, probably not dried up in the spring. Um, and the section that they'd like to replace was um, infiltrated by roots and damaged. Um, so they're trying to replace it, about a 10 foot section of that sewer pipe. Anything else? It's pretty straightforward. I think we all observed the pipe. They're not exactly, they're not replacing the section of the pipe that's actually in the stream bed. They want to replace it that's immediately adjacent to it, just beyond it, relative to the house. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a question of that it's too, that it's very close to the stream bed, not that it's actually in the stream bed. And I just want to have Kim clarify, they're here because they're in the stream protection zone. That's exactly why they're here. So yeah. they're doing any excavation or filling, regardless of the amount, requires conditional use approval in the stream protection district. There yeah. you go. Um, I see, uh, so let's, um, let's first ask if there's any um, public comment on this or if um, the- Do we need conflict of interest? Yes, thank you. So is there any conflict of interest on this one? Okay. None, none here? Yeah. Oh. No, yeah. same here. All right, well then uh, none heard, let's open it up for public comment and if the, um, applicant two would like to add anything to it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I have nothing to add, just that you need to fix the pipe. <laughs> right on. All right, I'm not hearing any public comment online or in the room. Oh. Any further comment? All right, I'm gonna close public comment. Let's get on with the review of this. Um, let's first have a motion to find it complete. I move it, I move it complete. Second. All right, all those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 And um, anybody might have a motion relative to using a short form so moved. checklist Second. on this one. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we do our little wonky um, approval vote. I move approval. Second. Then we press the pause button and we're gonna go through the review of the application. So in front of me, I've got the um, short form checklist. I've got the application and let's do this. And I'm following along. So, all right, section 6A general performance standards compatibility. Uh, they talk about the physical size, it's 10 feet of four inch sewer pipe. And, and they're going to retain the necessary grade and pitch. It's uh, 15 feet from the cottage, and, it can, and the density of development is that there's Lock contains two residential dwelling units and a storage shed. 
So C application 682 erosion and sedimentation control. Application talks about that. They'll put a hay down and prevent erosion in the stream, and the pipe is being hand dug. So C application highway safety is uh, NA. Impact on town services, none. It's already connected to public sewer. So I'm sorry, but can we go back to 682? Is that the, the removal of sand or gravel? 682. So they they said not applicable. Well, so they're gonna they're not removing it, but they're gonna. Well, the 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 application for 682 erosion sedimentation control mm -hmm. they the applicant says that hay will be put down to prevent erosion right. into right. the stream and the pipe will also be hand dug to reduce and prevent erosion from occurring so so we don't anticipate there's any that subsection two applies that removal of sand or gravel Thanks. so the yeah so they talked our standard talks about mulching and revegetation and disturbed soil, okay. temporary runoff control features like hay, hay bales, silt fencing, diversion ditches, and then three permanent stabilization structures such as retaining walls or riprap. Okay. So they they had an answer. So where I, when an applicant has an answer, we typically say C application. Okay. okay. So six A four. Impact on town services, none current buildings are connected to town sewer. So there is a reply there. So we say see application. Land suitability. They attach the uh, Hancock County Soil Survey book. See application. Lighting outdoor and a stormwater. Six A seven. Uh, there's no change in the current stormwater runoff, and they're not changing the section of pipe in the stream. So, C application, 6A8 vegetation, um, NA, I think we all observe there's none being removed or affected. Um, 6A9, dust fumes, vapors, odors, and gases. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's, it, why, that's why we have those pipes there. <laughs> so the application. The findings of fact are presented by the applicant and attached application with conclusion logs that both use is in compliance with all standards of section 6A for which the standard has been met. So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, this is pretty much all NA. 6B1 agriculture NA, 6B2 air landing sites NA, 6B, then it jumps to 6B7, that's excavation. That's why we're here because they're in the stream protection zone. So C application. That's what I get confused with. And then the rest, fences and walls, NA, sign re regulations, NA, wireless communication facility, NA, animal husbandry to NA, mobile food vendors, NA, rooming house, NA, and hotels and motels, NA. So the findings of fact are that the proposed use include none of the specific activities, land uses, Described in section 6B, except for applicable section noted above, which is 6B7, and the conclusion law is that section 6B is not applicable except for section 6B7, for which the standard has been met. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's not in the shoreline zone. It the is. Stream protection is ideal. The stream the protection shoreline. is the shoreline zone. There we go. So we go on to section 6C. Mm 
Right. Section 6C, shoreline zoning standards reviewed by the planning board, agriculture, and A, archaeological sites. They have an attached map. See application. Essential services. We talked about this existing sewer line provides services to a permitted use within the stream protection district. The existing stream runs across the whole front of the property. There's no re reasonable existing alternative. See application. Parking areas. NA. Marine and freshwater structure standards is NA. They're not building a pier. 6C9 roads and driveways. NA 6C11 water quality. That's part of why we're here. Pre, it's a pre existing line, and the houses have been there since the 1800s and early 1900s. So, C application. So the findings fact that the proposed use include none of specific activities and land uses described in section 60 except for 6C2, 6C5, and 6C11. And the conclusion law is that section 6C is not applicable except for 6C2, 6C5, and 6C11 for which the standard has been met. So much. All those in favor, aye. 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 And because we're in the shoreland zone, we have to do section five nine. So just bear with me. So section five nine standards five nine one will maintain safe and healthful conditions. The application five nine two will not result in water pollution, erosion, or sedimentation of surface waters. It's the application. 593 will adequately provide for the disposal of all wastewater. Hope so. 593 is C application. 594 will not have an adverse impact on spawning grounds, fish, aquatic life, or bird or other wildlife habitat. C application. 595 will conserve shore cover and visual as well as actual points of access to inland and coastal waters. NA. They're not on the shore. 596 will protect archaeological and historic resources as designated on the comp plan. See application. 597 will not adversely affect existing commercial fishing and maritime activities in a shoreland commercial district. NA. They're not in the shoreland commercial district. 598. Will avoid problems with the floodplain development and use. The application 599 is in conformance with the provisions of section 6A, 6B, and 6C for which the standard has been met. And the findings of fact are C above, and the conclusion law is all requirements of section 59 have been met. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any permit conditions to this one? I don't think so. Damn. What? There's Sorry. no permit conditions to this. Yeah, she's going to need a DEP permit by rule. There you go. So. So there's a main DEP permit by rule required. I've already applied for that permit. Fantastic. All right. So then back to our eight track player and let's press play on the approval vote. Um, all those in favor of approving the application with the um, permit condition of the receipt of the main DEP permit by rule? Aye. 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 
It's such a weird <laughs> way to do it. But congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Now, do they send you the DEP permit, Kim, or how does that work? Yeah, I'll get a copy of it. You'll get a copy. Okay, I'll follow up with them and see the timeline because it's pretty urgent. All right. Very much. Two applications in a public hearing in forty five minutes. All right. That's quick for us. It's not rest on our walls. No, never. Uh, item five, non-conforming structures. Tonight we have um, owner name, Northeast Harbor Tennis Club. Agent is Matthew Baird, architects. Location is 44 Manchester Road, Northeast Harbor, tax map 25, lot 20, zone Shoreland Residential 2. Uh, the purpose is section 4.3.6. Reconstruction and replacement, section 4.3.5, relocation, section 4.3.4, foundation, section 4.3.2, expansion, and section 4.3, um, subsection F, limitations on height of non-conforming structures. This is the reconstruction of the men's locker room, kitchen, shade pavilion, dining pavilion, and deck at the Northeast Harbor Tennis Club. Great, we had a site inspection at 345 and we're the, the butters notified. Others were notified on September 11th, 2024. And Alan, what was the date of the paper again? And uh, on Thursday, September 26th of 2024, it was put in the public notices in the Ellsworth American and Mount Desert Islander. So we had a site inspection at 345 and... To do uh, conflict of interest too. Throw that out there. get there. I need so, to trust you. Now. Yes. <laughs> so, is there any conflict of interest on this application? No. no. None here. None heard. And um, Daniel, would you care to report on your observations today at the site? Oh, we met back at the swim club and observed uh, the four structures that are going to be reconstructed and rebuilt. Um, the men's locker room will be uh, reconstructed in its original footprint, but raised approximately five feet. Um, the, um, I'm going to blank on what it was called, the Jade Shade, Shade, Shade Pavilion is going to be reconstructed, but set further back um, as much as it can be, I believe with the um, contours of the land. Um, the kitchen and the two apartments that are above it uh, will also be reconstructed um, in its original footprint, um, but also raised slightly again. This is all in conjunction with the new FEMA uh, requirements or recommendations uh, for elevations, um, as well as the dining pavilion. That will be raised, and if I remember correctly, the um, top of the roof elevation is also going to be raised by about two feet. 
and the decking surrounding the whole place will be redone. Anything else for the board to add to those observations? I, I concur. It's what people have to do these days with the rise of sea level, which is what they're doing, raising everything up. All right. Well, I'll kick it over to the agent then. Um, I think that you presented the uh, project uh, super clearly. Um, we can represent it for anybody else uh, who has questions, but uh, that's essentially what we're doing. Elevating uh, the four um, uh, buildings, uh, two of which are outdoor uh, pavilions, uh, the kitchen and the changing room to meet FEMA guidelines. All right. Well, I guess I'll open it up for public comment then. Anybody has any questions about this project? Step up to the mic. Going once, twice, not hearing any public comment. So let's close public com comment and get on with this one. And, you know, as we were talking a little bit about at the site, there's a, these non-conforming projects are not a linear review. So I think the first thing the board needs to determine is if this project even uh, qualifies to be reviewed by us. And, I believe we've all received a letter from Jerry Summonsby, an appraiser, about the project. You don't want to hear us talk about that? Yes. Jerry Summonsby has appraised property under the provisions of 4.1.1. The, the owner has to demonstrate that 50% or more of the value of the property has has damaged, has been damaged or will be damaged by its uh, re re in the replacement process. And Mr. Summersby determined that indeed uh, that standard has been met. And we have a letter in the file to that effect. Thank you. So it's a combination of significant storm damage and the, the alteration replacement by the construction process. Then I think we should still need, you know, this, this one's, and we talked a little bit about this too, but, um, at the at the site meeting, but um, this one is structured a little bit differently. Where I've got pseudo checklists for four three six four three four three five and four three two, and relative to where we are right now in the process, this checklist of four three six is exactly that that we. Um, that because of the value of the damage relative to the appraised value of the structure, um, you know, this falls within our purview. So I think what we should do is probably have a findings of fact and conclusion of law. And then since we have this form in front of us and it's referenced on the on the, our purpose here, uh, we probably should complete this, have a finding, conclusion law, and vote on it, and then let's all sign this thing. And you think that's the only one we need to do, or are we- Well, you know, I, as much as we like to expedite applications, and I think given the 
multiple multiple structure nature of this project and I think which is initiating multiple section review here, we probably should have a finding and conclu conclusion law on each and every one of these. But some of these are a little redundant, but um, I think again, where you know this these these specific sections are referenced in our purpose and we have these pseudo checklists for each section, I think we should do all four of these. So again, this first one is just a findings of fact and conclusion of law giving us jurisdiction to review this. So let's get that out of the way first. Well, if all we need is to review it is that it's been damaged. So we I mean if we're talking about all it, the terms of 4.3.6, then we can go all, through those. So all we're reviewing here is that like has the applicant provided evidence mm -hmm. that the damage exceeds the appraised value of the property. Which they have per jury summoned these letter dated. Is it dated? September 23rd. Yeah. It's 23rd. 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 Yeah. Yes. So that there's the findings of fact, and there, and then the conclusion of law, therefore. Planning board has jurisdiction under the. Okay. But this, yeah, but this, but this document here contains many more criteria for determining whether or not. I think we're going. We've got setback requirements. We've got. That's that's four point three point five. Yeah, so that, you know, that's that's going to be parsed in the subsequent section. Okay, except that it's also referred to in 4.206. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to figure out what our procedure is here. Yeah, and so this is the circular review process. So I will move that, here we go, that um, the facts are that per a letter from a certified appraiser, Jerry Summons being dated September 25th, 2024, the applicant has demonstrated that the value of the property, the damaged components and or the components to be reconstructed or replaced comprise more than 50% of the market value of the structures. And therefore, inclusion is that the planning board has jurisdiction to review this application. Okay. Any further discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye, aye. aye. Let's sign that one. So this is so the, let's follow the, is it the yellow brick road here. And if I'm not mistaken, and um, we're, are we, we're jumping to section 4.3.5 now. And let me just, we are, so now we're talking about relocation. But as it relates to six or relocation, you would say, yeah, so 
So to, again, just to put this all into context, we have to review 4.3.5 relocation, section 4.3.4 foundation, section 4.3.2 expansion, and section 4.3 limitations of height. So I've got 4.3.5 relocation in front of me now. And, um, and that is because it is referred to in 4.3.6 reconstruction or replacement, which is what they're actually doing. Yes. And that's why we are turning to the provisions of the requirement of 4.3.5, not because they're necessarily, re they are relocating one of the four buildings. So just Bear with me while I read this kind of introductory paragraph of 4.3.5. And this is the standards of section 4.3.5 relocation non-conforming structure. What that says is that the site of relocation conforms to all setback requirements to the greatest practical extent as determined by the planning board and provided that the applicant demonstrates that the present subsurface sewage Disposal system meets the requirements of state law and the state of Maine subsurface wastewater disposal rules, or that a new system can be installed in compliance with the law and said rules. In no case shall a structure be relocated in a manner that causes the structure to be more non conforming. In determining whether the building relocation meets the setback to the greatest practical extent, the planning board shall consider. Our first thing is size of the lot. The size of the lot is 1.68 acres. Mm -hmm. Say that one more time. 1.68. 1. And where are you getting that? <laughs> you should reference. There you go. I like the key it in what drawing. And but like they do have it in their summary, right? So it's on um. I'm not mistaken, it's on sheet B010. Zero, 010? Zero. Zero, zero. Yeah. That's the Herrick and Salisbury survey. Just looking, where is the area? The applicant would like to see us to another drawing. Or in that case, we could reference our application. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, one, two, three. Page four of the nine nineteen application. Size of the lot. Um, one point six acres relative to the nine nineteen application letter. Six or 1.68. Yeah, 1.68. One, one sorry. Sorry. And um, the lot is fully developed. Yes. Yes, it is. Steeply sloped and fully developed. Therefore, I mean, we should probably think about a conclusion of law. 
relative to the size of the law live being a, a complicating factor or the context of a potential relocation to be considered because there's nowhere to go. Right. right. Fun fact is that the lot is 1.68 acres and those acres are fully developed and the location of the subject structures, um, there is no other location for the subject. For these structures, steeply sloped. Yes, well, that's part of the second one. Okay. Um, and therefore, uh, the conclusion is that the location proposed is uh, the only possible location for these structures on this lot. Second. We we have in the past done votes on each one and we've done it as a single one at the end just throwing you know, that out there i know and it seems like every time it's different i think in this case again where we have a specific purpose sections identified in our purpose and we have those specific section um and we did or not checklist um forms to review i think we should just keep doing this so. well we you, i mean and we could just go through each one yeah. of these and then move it we can after, do that um, and too yes as long as, so the topography slope of the land is a very steeply sloped land and there is no other um do you want a you want a well, map that shows that well again i think maybe what was the drawing i referenced the, the heritage salisbury survey G -O -N -O. Yeah, G010 shows significant topography on site. Right, so, uh, steep topography. Um, and the conclusion, therefore, is again that there is no other feasible location other than the existing location for these buildings. I think too they want a decision. They should hear decisions that, you know, in terms were in terms of a possible consideration of relocation that doesn't make sense for us to consider a relocation because of the top topography. Because if you were to relocate it, if you even had room, it would impact the topography significantly. Sure, if the topography makes relocation not, it is not possible given- um, Impractical. Yeah, at best, impractical at best. So that would be our conclusion. Should I go on to the soil erosion? What's the next review? Attention for soil erosion. The board finds that and there isn't much soil to erode here <laughs> and and it's not anticipated that there's going to be um, soil erosion as a result of this, the, the location of these buildings. Furthermore, by lifting the buildings above the flood level, hopefully, or the, up to the FEMA, above the FEMA standards, one might minimize the, the effort will be to minimize any potential future erosion that may occur. And therefore, we conclude that this project will not generate soil erosion. Now, they are going to be putting a, if I may just talk out loud, they're going to be putting a, a road in to accomplish all of this. And that, um, is that also that's part of the first application that we did? Well, so that's already yeah, it's already in already in to do more as they right, and they've already um, demonstrated to the board that they have sufficient controls to handle any 
in a case. nutshell, we're demonstrating, look, keeping these things where they are, yes. just raising them is minimizing the potential. potential so correct. correct. You want to cite that to a specific document you did on the other two is the only reason I ask. Don't mind the letter. Yeah, we, so we could refer to this one that got a narrative on it. Right. And we've got narratives on all of this, but. Right. They have an erosion and sedimentation control plan that they're um, referencing in this letter. If you wanted to see the erosion and control plan previously submitted. Guys, yeah, what sheet is that one? There is a probably a potential for soil erosion. First, yeah. Uh, purpose of the project uh, yeah. is to make the site resilient in the future to storm events and have less opportunity for soil erosion. By raising these field components to FEMA plant levels, the potential for long term erosion is minimized. And then they reference the pro previously uh, submitted uh, erosion sedimentation control. But in this application, they're only considering the buildings. Yes, That's what impact they would have on solar erosion. Correct. Yeah. So they're correct. So the buildings that encircle the entire site um, and the erosion control measures that we approved. Involved in in right. I think that's what they're referencing. Right. There you go. So, findings of fact are that by rebuilding these structures in their current location, the board finds that they will minimize the potential for present and future construction and future soil erosion, and therefore, the standards uh, of 4.2.5 have been met. Oh, the back of it. Uh, 4.3.5 soil erosion. Yes, yeah. yeah, so uh, location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties. That's the next review criteria. And the findings of fact are that there already are significant number. Most of the rest of the property is already built with existing properties that, in terms of elevation, are either up above it or below it. There are the pool features that we've already discussed in the prior application. And these are in a sort of an elevation wise, are in sort of a middle tier, and there is no other location on that property. And it, this is not going to change the location of these structures either as it relates to other buildings on the property or on adjacent properties. They're all interconnected. They're all interconnected. They're all they're all components of a whole. So we conclude that they have met the provisions of 4.3.5 as it pertains to the location of other structures on the property or adjacent properties. The location of the septic system and other on-site soil suitable septic systems, we find that is not applicable because this system is connected to public sewer. Vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. There is very little to none according to the plans. The existing deck and structures are devoid of vegetation. And I'm referencing the narrative Submitted by the applicant, page, page something, page one, two, three, four, five. We, we also have a demolition point. Right. The sheet DM 100. They refer to. No vegetation removal is required as part of the reconstruction. During construction, an existing invasive species, not weed, will be removed and replaced with indigenous plantings and all existing landscape beds. Therefore, we find that they have met the standards of 4.3.5 as it pertains to the removal of vegetation. And there is a section on this regarding applicable federal, state, and town permits in place prior to any construction. There, uh, I'm not aware of any other conditions other than the, the uh, obtaining applicable federal, state, and town permits. 
in our now. Therefore, the board finds that the standards of section 4.3.5, relocation of non-conforming structures has been met. And we want a motion second and vote second. on that, correct? Oh, okay. Motion second. second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, sign that one too. Okay, we've done four three six. Make sure we have jurisdiction. We have did four three five in the context of relocation. Now we get kicked to four three four foundation. Basing Section four three point four to be specific. Right. And that's <clears throat> that's this guy. Yeah. We find that we have already determined that this has met the criteria 4.3.5 with respect to the location of the buildings have been placed as far back relative to the setback requirement to the greatest to the greatest practical extent. Um, we've already determined that. We've already determined. So that. what we haven't determined is that um, what are they doing for their foundations? All right, the foundations in each of these buildings are currently, the evidence shows, uh, are currently wooden pilings, except for the kitchen, which is a concrete foundation. And the wooden pilings will be replaced with pilings of a height to meet uh, FEMA standards in the same location except for the shade pavilion. So it's just again yeah. putting kind of shaping the ball of wax we're okay. addressing here. This is like specific of the foundation um, work that they're proposing relative to similar criteria for when okay so right? we're going to do these again. So as they so, th think about it like as they're 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 re demoing and reinstalling these foundations and their proposed configurations how are they how are they addressing okay those criteria the slope of the land the vegetation the the, the size of the lot the which we've already lot, all right so the size know, of the lot the board it, finds it, because what it does is it like considers the foundation almost like as a structure in itself. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So the board finds that the size of the lot is 1.68 acres. I'm not sure what kind of conclusion to make about that other than this 1.68 acres. Well, that, that the again, if lot. we were reconstructing found foundations on a lot with no developable area. Right, and the lot is already entirely, almost entirely developed, and there are no other possible locations for replacing the foundation. So the proposed pure, pure foundation and reuse of the existing foundation is... is um, really being placed to the greatest practical extent. Yes, back from the set back from the from the setback. Mm -hmm. Within the setback. So what's the next one? So, so the board finds that the soil erosion the, 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 proposed the proposed pilings are going to essentially be in the same location, only higher, and that the open board, foundation system. Yeah, open foundation systems except for the kitchen, which will be 
a slab. Well, my understanding is it'll be a slab based upon the proposal. You're reusing the foundation under the kitchen. Right, but by making it higher. Yeah. But is that a slab currently? It's currently a slab. All right, so it's a slab. All right. Cross wall, yeah. Cross wall and slab. Yeah. Cross okay. So, so I think we need to reference the two, make sure that in our motion to reference the two types of foundations. Right. With respect to the pilings, which may be supplemented by concrete in the new construction, by placing the pilings in essentially the same location, the board, the, the applicant is minimizing the potential for the soil erosion. Similarly, with respect to the reuse of the existing foundation for the kitchen, the applicant is minimizing the potential for soil erosion. The one that's a little different is the shade pavilion, which actually will be on pilings, but will be moved back further away from within the setback. And so, but in a way that does not create additional potential for soil erosion. <clears throat> and moves it further back from within the setback. Therefore, the board concludes that the provisions of 4.3.4 with regard to soil erosion has been that topography of the land, the board finds it's still the same very steep piece of land and therefore using an open foundation system and existing foundation. Right. Will is the only practical way to reconstruct these buildings. And therefore, with respect to that, the, the applicant has met the provisions of 4.3.4. With little to no adverse impact. To the on... topography. Other structures on the lot and on adjacent properties, the, the property is already structured almost entirely. And these buildings will remain with, foundations. These foundations will remain in their current location with one minor exception and will continue to function as a whole with the other structures on this property. And they will not affect adjacent properties any differently than the current structure, the current foundations do. Therefore, the board finds that the, the applicant has met the provisions of 4.3.4. With regard to the location of the septic system, the board finds that is not applicable because the uh, project is tied into municipal wastewater. Within a shoreline zone only, with regard to clearing of vegetation, Board finds that there will be no trees removed. The board finds that any, that there will be minimal disturbance of vegetation because there currently isn't any vegetation. And therefore, with respect to these foundations, the board finds that to the proposed that we keep referencing the proposed um, open pier foundation and the reuse of the existing false wall and slab. Let me just ask you about that. About that uh, one question about that. I know that we talked about in the prior project there was there was like vegetation, like seaweed that was going to have to be moved when you did that kind of work. Do you anticipate any of that for these foundations, pilings? 
Just to not be. Uh, yeah. we're, 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 oh, they're trying to get rid of. Yeah. Not be you know, replacing it with indigenous uh, plant material. But relative to the foundations. Yeah. The only thing right there is that noxious, uh, not weed. Okay. It's there. They're at the piles in there. It's in the sand. Uh, mm -hmm. the rock weed likes to grow in that intertidal. Yeah. And that's all the way up outside the splash zone. So there's no rock weed or vegetation. Okay. Okay. There. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are we at, therefore, the, I'm not sure what we're, what we're saying. The board finds that the, the proposed open peer foundation system and the reuse of the existing, existing cross wall and slab um, obviate the need to clear vegetation. Yes. And therefore, the board finds that the provisions of 4.3.4 with respect to clearing the vegetation have been met. And the board finds there are no additional approval conditions beyond the receipt of all applicable federal, state, and town permits. So moved. Second. <laughs> it is pretty short. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Don't sign it before we vote. Yes. Oh, don't change it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> all right, so. All right, Did we go from 4.3.4 to 4.3.2. You know, and the, what, yeah, so what, in a nutshell, what this one is talking about, this is talking about like, um, you know, the, the area and height of, ex, of allowable expansion. Where, and this was relative, this one is, was relative to the question I had about mm -hmm. where um, the state, the it's changed where um you know to be in compliance with the fema standards you know, you can raise your ridge uh, as you raise your floor to be compliant and that's what they're doing here right in one case right right because in that and just uh, bear with me, just where yeah, this we, was added last year. Yeah, so yeah. The being collaborated and finally caved. Yeah, so one was always against the other. Yeah, because as you know, in Mount Kwame, you couldn't raise a height because you're limited to a height. Standard. Yeah, like the little structure in Seal Harbor where they had to lop off the top of the. Yeah, building. it's almost flat now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So I'm finally so, yeah. corresponded those. FEMA two. finally caved and. Good. So what what this what section four point three point two bear with me is yeah. talking about it's non conforming structures and expansion in the shoreline zone and Anne's falling along right here yeah. and and what this is talking about is that all new structures in the shoreline zone must meet the applicable shoreline setback requirements in section three yeah. and section six um, a yeah, non conforming structure in the shoreline zone may be added to or expanded obtaining a permit from the same permitting authority as that for a new structure if such addition or expansion does not increase the non conformity of the structure and it's in accordance with the subsections of 432 and what the subsections of 432 talk about are the different regions within the 75 foot setback of compliance. Like you have a zero to 25 foot zone, and then you have a 26 to 75 foot zone. And each of those two zones have different requirements where, you know, in the zero to 25, you know, you're allowed 800, 800 square feet or 30% larger and 15 feet. If you're out 26 to 75, you're allowed a thousand square feet, 30% um, 30, 30 more or up to 20 feet. But in this case, these the majority of these structures are, um, are not- um, Well, they're not enlarging. 
Yeah, they're not enlarging them. They're working with the pre-existing footprints and the old, the dining pavilion is the only one that I believe the board understood was being raised and that was being raised two feet. Is that correct? They're all being they're raised. All, they're, 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 all, all being raised. they're all being raised. I thought we're not well the ceiling it's the pitch on the roof is increasing. So as you you guys are making these that's why you're shaking your heads. <laughs> so that as you're raising these guys to meet the FEMA specifications, the buildings are becoming taller and we don't regulate that because now FEMA is aligned and allowing for that. We don't have to look at the specific criteria of 432. You okay. do have a footnote F. Yeah, we, yes. we, we, we okay. still have a 35 foot. No, that's, no? F, that's at F 75 feet. Beyond 75 okay. feet, you know, 35 feet. Oh, no. and the structure, the reason why you're in the, the expansion category is that's where it talks about the height, but not yeah. expanding the footprint. Uh, right. We've already talked about that. Yeah. Right. The only place you get to discuss the height is under the section of uh, expansion. And then on the, the that section of expansion, if you look at the height of whether or not it's compliant with what's allowed by FEMA, which is a maximum of four feet above the flood zone, three feet to the bottom. And so okay. that's where you would start. Mm -hmm. And they're two feet above. So footnote F is what you should be reading. Yeah. So I'm, do you have it? I was going to just read it. Okay. So, well, I didn't know if it was revised. Well, it's, okay. it's on it's on this okay good form. So what we're about recording it. They gotta record it. Yeah, yeah, so we ran into this before. Just be aware that any approved plan for expansion or non-conforming structure under section four point three point two must be recorded by the applicant in the registry of deeds of the county in which the property is located within 90 days of approval. The recorded plan must include the existing and proposed footprint of structures on the property, the existing and proposed height of the structures, the shoreland zone boundary, and the evidence of approval by the permitting authority. The Yale. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? Well, we need a Findings of fact and conclusion of law. Okay. Formed into a motion. Oh, fine. What Alan wants to do it now. Balance. We find that the structures are all being elevated. In order to be compliant. in order to be compliant with FEMA recommendations, but in no case will be raised more than three feet above the base flood elevation level. Yeah. And and the structure is the structures are being re reconstructed. Relocated, replaced within the boundaries of the fossil so that the water body or wetback setback requirements is, are met to the greatest extent practical. That's, I guess, the conclusions. Um, therefore, we find that they have met the provisions of 4.3.2. I want to say more than that. I'm basically just reading the statute because we find, as a matter of fact, that they're not elevating any of the buildings above more than three feet above the FEMA recommended recommended height. Yeah, you should have them, you know, show what are explain the existing elevation and the proposed. Sure, on each building, I can do that. Maybe generally described as um, less than the existing elevation of the men's locker room, the floor height, 
is 10.93 and it's being raised to 16 feet, one foot above the FEMA recommended 15 feet. The deck, the final height of the deck, I don't have the current height of that, but it will be raised to one foot above the 15 foot FEMA recommendation. The shade pavilion will rise, the floor height will rise from 11 to 16 feet, which is also one foot above the FEMA recommendations. And the building height will rise from 25 to 30 feet as a result. Um, the kitchen is on a concrete slab at 13.13 feet and a slab of the same dimension and location will be constructed to raise it to 16 feet, one foot above the FEMA recommended 15 feet. The height, because of that, and only because of that, the height will rise from 36.6 to 236.6 from 33.8. The dining pavilion will also be raised to 16 feet, one foot above FEMA recommendations. I'm not sure what it currently is. What is it? 12.6. Thank you very much. And the final height will be 27 feet, seven inches and seven, final height of the roof will be 27 feet, seven and three eighths inches. Is that correct? Uh, For which? To the, uh, dining. Okay. Thank you. What was that number? 59.95. And that's because you're changing the pitch to accommodate a. Okay. So raising the uh, height towards the um, within the dining pavilion. Okay. There's always seven feet tall. Again, uh, I would say, uh, therefore, we find that they have met provisions of 4.3.2. Uh, yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Yeah. 4.3.2. Well, hey, technically we're reviewing section 4.3.2 expansion and section 4.3F, 4.3.2F. 4.3.2F, yes. Okay. But what I'm getting at is we're reviewing the entire section plus, sub plus footnote F. Oh, that, that's the only one that applies. Right. So I think that so I think we should make reference to that. Yeah. So our review mm -hmm. of section 4.3.2 finds that the only applicable provision to this application is 4.3.2F. Yes. And the other sections of that provision are not applicable. Mm -hmm. And that the applicant has met the provisions, the requirements of 4.3.2 F. I think that motion. It was motion. Yes. All right. Thanks. Any further discussion? Yeah. Applicants come to me with that motion. Uh, you have a section, you have two sections here. Yeah, so that's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. Is, uh, okay, I see what it is. You, you see it, the first yeah, one yeah. is 432. Second one's coming kind of relative to 432F. Okay. Right, so we have a motion. I just want to make sure we catch both of them if we need to. Yep, thank you. Yes. 
All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And if I'm not mistaken, that was it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out. I just ask does the approval of all of these mean an approval of that application, or does there need to be an additional? Why don't we? Overarching I, why don't we have Gail make an overarching motion yes. to just I steal the sure. deal? Can I have? Yeah. Or do we have all of them? I, yeah. <laughs> oh, all the okay. so, <laughs> The board finds that the applicant has why? met the provisions of four point three. Point four foundation, four point three point five relocation of non conforming structure, four point three point six reconstruction or replacement of a non conforming structure, and four point three point two extent expansion in the shoreline, four point three point six F expansion in the shoreland zone, and therefore approves the application as submitted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You guys want these back. Yeah. You can recycle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We You got them from all of them. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, first, you know, yeah. first construction yeah. review. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait for that in, Yeah. 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 The only thing I want to say is that as the chair of the loser advisory committee, I went to the select board meeting on Monday because at the first loser advisory committee meeting, we had a discussion that involved a, a member who is also on the select board questioning the scope of the work of the loser advisory committee. And after that meeting, I contacted him and said, maybe I should come to a select board meeting and we should talk about this. And the up, I did that on Monday. And the upshot of that is that they have asked the loser advisory committee to draft a statement of purpose, if you will, or the, and the scope of, of work for the loser advisory committee. I've taken my first stab at that. I shared it with a couple of people. I haven't yet gotten any feedback. We have a loser advisory committee meeting on Tuesday of next week. And I will bring it up at that time and probably circulate that draft if I don't hear any complaints or concerns. It's basically the way I'm structuring it. It's that the loser advisory committee will work to attempt to make recommendations with respect to any needed land use ordinance changes, additions, deletions, and it will do so in conjunction with the planning board and with the select board. And if the public brings things to, to the lose for its action, I think it needs to go, I think that also needs to be referred to either the select board or the planning board or both before the loser on its own motion takes up um, any any anything that the public brings before for, for action. For example, somebody is bringing up the idea that um, they want some sort of allowance made so that they can put tables outside their business on Main Street in Northeast Harbor. And 
that is something that a board other than the land use advisory committee, which is an advisory committee, should determine is something that that you want the land use advisory committee to pursue as a matter of its when it prioritizes the work. And also that we would work with the planning board and the select board to prioritize what tasks, knowing that not everything gets done in a particular year. And one other thing I put in there is that it's always our goal to attempt to present proposals that clarify and simplify ordinances to the greatest extent possible. So that, in a rambling nutshell, is the outline of what I'm proposing the scope of work of the advisory committee. I think the committee needs to be renamed. Yeah, that's fine. Because it's not just land use, it's not like that we're looking at. We should be like an ordinance review committee, uh, advisory or something group. Because we are, we're getting, like you just said, the sale of food and merchandise is under um, use of public property, sidewalk, streets, et cetera. Right. Um, the World Waste Water Rebate Program ordinance, right. that's right. going to be brought to you guys for the subject tank inspection. Right. Um, you know, and the sewer ordinance is under the jurisdiction of the Public Works Director. Um, you know, like in the road thing or right away over there. And that's that's these are all different ordinances that are not land use. If I subdivision is not land use, subdivision. Well, well, but it's not a loser, but I think it's definitely land use. It's not a use, yes, it's not yeah, but it's I'm not using that term land generically, land right. use. So it's not in the land use zoning ordinance. Correct. It's a separate ordinance. And that, so, but what I'm saying is yeah. that and like the mobile home one, yeah. I mean, these are all different ordinances that you know, it's not land use, it's land use, but it's not in the land use ordinance, right. which is what we were tasked to work on when we became this committee, was to work on land use zoning ordinance stuff. Right, I do think that clearly needs to, that is a key task right now is to clarify, first of all, what you mean, but we mean when we say the word land use in the context of that committee. Um, and my, my perception at this point in time is that if it's something that the planning board may end up touching, then it's land use. And that doesn't answer your other questions that you know we need to. Yeah, I mean, that's subdivision and that's land use, that's it. Well, it's quarry, it's quarry oh, and, and the solar. I don't know, is mineral extraction in there too? That's in the quarry. The solar will be discussed and that so will be a separate ordinance. It won't be in the land use zone. Right, but who will be? I don't know. Right, that may end see. up in the planning board. Could be. Right. So you're right that we do need to figure that out. And there are the reason it's touched off is that the members of, of the select board saw a very narrow purpose. Like uh, the only purpose for the land use advisory committee was to help simplify the, 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 the land use ordinance. And to take out things. Don't add stuff in it. Don't make it bigger. But the we don't have the simplicity or the you know lack uh, lack of it, it's no longer there anymore. You you've got to put more stuff in your ordinance because you know. Um, well, what I said to the select board is, it's always a goal to not add things, but it's never the reality to not, not add things. It's because not. humans are really clever creatures. And we're always looking for inventive new ways. And they're always hiring attorneys to use to <laughs> use land. And it may have been one thing when we all had a hundred acres when we didn't necessarily impact on our neighbors all that. Yeah, but you know that's just, not the case anymore. Just the society, the way the you know, it's yes. all I mean, it's just it's you have to, you have to put in or else we'll be the wild west, but you have to put in Correct. regulations and you know you, this, we do and that's the nature of every aspect of the law it isn't course. just land use it's like of course i mean criminal statutes when i started were considerably smaller than they are now etc so the whole is true across the board and it always will be it's yeah. the nature I mean, of you know my job it, i used to deal with the homeowners or you know now i it's it's attorneys yeah i'm constantly dealing with attorneys yeah 
And it's so fun because <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know how they can be. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, and they're always looking to push boundaries. Um, yes, they are. That's that's and that's okay. I mean, that's the the way that's the purpose of these things. So anyway, we're we're kind of trying to clarify that, and I think you know we're going to have have to have more discussions, and I'll probably have to be back to the select board and talk about. But we'll next step will be to talk about it at our meeting on Tuesday, which every which is at five, and everyone's entitled to that and appreciate it. Thank you. How you can make your I move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We did it. That, that may have been weird, but I, I don't come out of here.